Thanks for tuning in to Bourbon Drop. I'm your host, Myron. Today, we've got Redwood Empire's Lost Monarch Cast Strength. I know it's been a while. I did pick this one up at the Total Wine uh, Store Hall, too, and I've been trying to get around to these things. Man, I've got so many bottles, so let's get it. Bottle Drop! Bottle Drop! Bottle Drop! This is Redwood Empire's Lost Monarch Cash Strength. Now, this is kind of the first release of Cash Strength I think they ever released. I mean, they're a pretty young company. They are out of California. Um, they pretty much bottle their products. So they source a lot. They have started to um, come to the market with their own distillate, that being the Grizzly Beast. Now, if you have not seen the review I did on the B Grizzly Beast, go back and watch it. Uh, I wasn't a super huge fan, but if you want the details and all of the notes, go back and check that one out. Now, my first experience with Redwood Empire was with Lost Monarch. Now, Lost Monarch happens to be, and I did not know this at the time, Lost Monarch happens to be a combination of their straight bourbon and their straight rye. That mix being 55% straight rye, 45% straight bourbon. Uh, that is their Emerald Giant and the Pipe Dream. Now, this was the first burr rye, boo rye, however you want to say it, that I actually had. I didn't know that at the time. I just knew that it was something that I poured in a glass that I liked. So let's get into the nose. I get a lot of alcohol. It's it's that sharpie note. Um, it's not off-putting at all. I do like it a lot. It it is very much sharpie note. Um, I get apples, a little spice, some pepper. Just a light vanilla, and that's pretty much it. So let's get into the palette of the Lost Monarch cast strength and see what we can pick up. It's actually a little bit of cinnamon, some clove, some apples come through. There is like a touch of maybe that pineapple. I'm getting like a, a, like a sharp note on the sides of the tongue. There's a hint maybe a hint of some cocoa powder now it comes in at 117.2 proof um so it's i wouldn't say it's super proofy um and this is actually my first drink of the day so i wouldn't say that it's super proofy at all let me go back into the nose one more time i get a little more like a berry slash uh maybe grape note that comes out on the nose this time And then it becomes muted a little bit of vanilla and then it, it kind of becomes muted which is odd because normally it's the other way around for me like i pick up more notes after the set after the first sip and the second nosing let's go back into the palette for the second time yeah that's really enjoyable that has a pretty good mouthfeel i'm not picking up as much alcohol uh, Sharpie marker note. Now, when I took that big inhale, I did get kind of a whiff of it, kind of hit the lungs, but I'm not getting it as much in the glasses uh, anymore. I'm not getting it um, on a palate. That sharp note on the sides of the tongue, they kind of went away. I am left behind with like a nice light leather. So the finish is hanging around. The mouth fill is, is really good. I'll pour some more so you guys can see what the color looks like because it is a nice dark color. You probably can see it. And the, the brown the brown label, which I, I actually like a lot, is uh, kind of making it look a lot darker than it is, but it is it's decently dark, if you can see that. Let's get into the breakdown of Redwood Empire's Cash Strength Lost Monarch. Is it worth the chase? It is allocated. Um, shout out, I can't remember his name right now, but I think I shouted him out in the Beltway Bourbon Hall video. 
the associate floor associate who pointed me in the direction of this because I almost walked out of Total Wine and Laurel without it. Uh, he pointed me in the direction and I scooped it up. So shout out to him. Um, but is it worth the chase? I don't know if I want to say it's worth the chase. I am not saying it's bad. Do not get me wrong because I am enjoying it. But would I could I see myself running from store to store trying to find every release? Um, am I going to chase down the pipe dream because I had this? Am I going to chase down the Emerald Giant because I had this? Now, I've heard good things about those two. If I see them, I may pick them up. Is it worth the chase? I'm going to have to say no. Um, is it worth over retail? It already comes in at around 75 bucks is I think what I spent for this at the uh, Laurel Total Wine. Forgive me for not having the information with me and being ready, but I think it was around 75 bucks. Uh, so I wouldn't pay over retail. I think it is priced appropriately. Um, I don't want to say they could come down some because honestly, at 117, you guys know what I'm about to say. My $60 monster, that being 1920, Old Force 1920 at 115 proof is pretty much unbeatable. But anyway, at 117.2 proof, um, being a Burr Rye, I do like it, but I don't necessarily think that I would go uh, past retail. So like I said, I don't want to say that they can come down because I understand companies do have to make their money. Would I give it to a new bourbon drinker? It does not drink like 117 proof. Honestly, and this is my first drink of the day, so I did not get a super wicked like burn in the throat or have it like soup like heat me up going down um that 117.2 proof was it was actually pretty smooth especially after coming off with those sharpie notes so um i i don't think i would give it to a new bourbon drinker because i wouldn't want to expose them to that proof even though it drank easy for me will it always be on a bar that's always a tricky question with um special releases like you know these lost monarchs like this is batch one so i'm assuming since this is batch two i'm assuming they're going to have a batch two batch two might even be their own distillate if it's their own distillate i may pick it up and you know of course do a review for you guys but you know have it on the bar um and i may have it on the bar just for people who've never had it will i buy another one once i'm out chances are I'm probably not. Like I said before, 75 is a lot and I think it is good, but it's just not something that I can see myself running out and going to get. So with that being said, let the whiskey flow. Never run out unless you're headed to a drop. Till next time.